What's in store for the future of Demon Slayer? Hinokami Chronicles gave us a wonderful arena fighter, one of the best in the industry, and an amazing starting point for a brand new game series. I say new game series because even though CyberConnect 2 hasn't confirmed a sequel yet, they are on record saying that they only take these types of deals with new IP when they can see themselves working on that property for the next 10 years. So while nothing is confirmed yet, I think it's very safe to expect a Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles 2 and who knows, maybe even a third. Now this game has some issues that I've talked in the past with the hashtag fix demon slayer video issues that should definitely be fixed in this first game still we shouldn't have to wait for a sequel for them to be addressed I'm talking about things like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox one input delay the lack of spectator mode and a lot of other features there are also a bunch of changes that I would make to the game systems and balancing that I mentioned in a different video before a sequel I think all of us want to see some bigger changes and that's what this video is all about it's about the things that I'm expecting to see in a demon slayer sequel and also the things that I want to see happen but even with with our eyes closed, I believe everyone can enjoy today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Raycon. I simply cannot live without wireless earbuds anymore. I use them for work, to work out, or simply relax and listen to some podcasts. The change from wired to wireless earbuds was one of the biggest changes to my lifestyle this year. So why not bring that change to your loved ones this holiday? Raycons are the perfect gift as they start at half the price of other premium audio brands and they are available in five stylish colors so you can pick the perfect one for everyone on your list. With free shipping and free returns, gifting Raycons is easier than ever before. And to me, the thing that really pushes Raycons above other audio brands is just how comfortable they are. I often forget I'm wearing my Raycons, I even fall asleep every day wearing them, watching people in Japan taking long walks at night. They are so comfortable that I fall asleep every day with my Raycons. And what's even more impressive is that they simply don't fall off. The fit is so natural that I'm never scared of them randomly falling off while I'm running or working out. So if that sounds good to you and you'd like to support the channel, go to buyraycon.com slash globku and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off anything you order. The link is down below and thank you Raycon for sponsoring this video. Season 2 of Demon Slayer has begun. Soon everyone will know what Tengen Uzui is capable of and according to some data mining we will actually be getting him as a playable character once all the other demons are released. But there's no data mining for any characters beyond that. No season 2 demon, not anyone else. So I really believe that Uzui will be the last character to join this roster and at that point we will be starving for more. So the first thing you can expect from a sequel is obviously a bigger roster. All 19 characters from the first game, nope I'm still not counting the academy characters as different, plus the season 2 demon and a few others that are sort of missing from this roster. For instance, I think Haganezuka would be a wonderful addition as a joke character. Better joke than Murata for sure. If Murata can make it, come on, give Haganezuka a chance. Kanao is probably the most wanted character that didn't make it into this roster and maybe you even add a few members from the spider family, like the spider father who could have a transformation gimmick. You know, he starts kind of as a standard character, but then he gets really buff. I would love to see something like that. And then maybe Spider Mother being a puppet character. Given how unique they are making these new demons, I now believe that they're willing to go as far as building new character archetypes. So characters like Spider Mother are a lot more likely to make it. Who knows, maybe they can even figure something out for Kyogai. Oh, and let's not forget. Ramen guy, please. With new characters we might also see some new stages and I don't just mean season 2 stages which I won't spoil in this video, but also some other stages that were already made, just for some reason they're not available in versus mode. I'm talking about the stages that you play during special missions in story mode. They look really good and completely different. So a bigger roster and a bigger stage selection screen, I think that's pretty safe to expect if we ever see a sequel to Demon Slayer. Now this video isn't just about playing it safe, so here's something that I hope will happen but I'm not super optimistic. A better netcode. I think the netcode in Demon Slayer is already a lot better from what they used in Storm. At the very least, it's a lot more stable. That said, it's still far from perfect. There are desync issues that I hope will get fixed in this game still, but even if that gets addressed, there's a significant delay when playing online matches. To be clear, this delay exists everywhere. I'm not talking about the PS4 delay or Xbox One delay. I get the feeling that a lot of players complaining about delay on those platforms, they are actually complaining about the online delay and that's not not the same thing at all. Online has a lot of delay no matter where you are playing it. The issue with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One is that the delay also exists offline and then it stacks up with the online delay, making the experience even worse. So even if they fix that PS4 and Xbox One stuff, you're still gonna feel delay online. That's just how the game works. And while the PS4 and Xbox One fix should still happen in this game, 
a netcode fix is for sure not gonna happen until we see a sequel. And maybe not even then. How many Storm games did we get with bad netcode? All of them. Did it ever get better? No, it was always the same no matter how much we complained. But what's different this time is that Sega is the publisher of this game and they seem a lot more receptive to player feedback than what Bandai was back in the day. So I can only hope that the online netcode sees some improvement. I'm not gonna call for rollback, even though I, I love playing fighting games with rollback netcode, 100%. But I simply don't know how it works at a technical level and since I have never seen an an arena fighter use rollback, I don't know what the challenges are there. I don't even know if it's possible. But please, figure out the netcode side of things. If you need a frame of reference, my hero wants justice. It's not rollback netcode, it's some wizard netcode that for some reason just feels super smooth. Unless, you know, the usual stuff. Wi-Fi players and bad, bad connections that just can't play online games. Or people that decide to live stream while playing games even though they don't understand how upload speeds work. But yeah, no netcode is gonna fix that stuff. My hero has a great netcode. As for Demon Slayer, look, if we can play using Steam Remote Play and have a better experience than with your own online lobbies, then you really messed it up. I think it's also pretty safe to expect some new gameplay systems. I talked about this a little bit during the game balance video. There are changes that I would like to see in this game before a sequel, like nerf running away. You can either give more tracking to the homing dash or a bigger recovery after landing from an air dash, but running away is way too easy in this game and that option needs nerfing. And there are some other system changes that I think would be cool that said, that type of change I think could fit in a balance patch. For a sequel, I think there are a lot of changes that I think would be cool and are actually way too big for a balance patch. For instance, what if demons didn't have to play solo? Or what if slayers didn't have to play as a team? What if you could actually choose to take one or two characters into battle regardless of the character you're picking? The number of team combinations at that point would skyrocket, so even with a smaller roster like this game, you wouldn't run into the same teams all the time. The the trade-off is obvious, if you have a team you can call assists, swap characters, etc. If you're playing solo, you have two extra special moves. Now this would obviously need some heavy reworking of all the characters, because if you simply take Rui's demon skills away and replace those with an assist, he is instantly the best character in the game. So the demon's strength really must come from those extra skills. Likewise, for the slayers, you need to give each slayer two extra skills that would be powerful enough to make up for their lack of assist. It's a ton of work, but it's the the kind of change that can really justify a sequel on its own. Playing solo Rengoku or playing a demon duo is something that fans would definitely want to do. It would appeal to a casual audience, but also give the competitive scene a lot more variety. With a new game, we would also get a new story, a story covering season 2 of the anime. Now, season 2 will probably be a lot shorter than season 1 was along with the Mugen Train movie, but given its setting, I can see the story being just as long, if not longer. In season 1, we follow Tanjiro and Nezuko across different environments and locations. Each mission has its setting, so we jump between different areas with both free roaming and combat. Season 2, however, doesn't work like that. The entirety of Season 2 is a single arc, the Entertainment District. As such, I can see the story mode being a lot more like an action-adventure game, with main quests, side quests, collectibles in a single open world, the Entertainment District itself. That's not to say there won't be multiple stages or fighting arenas, there definitely will be. But the entire Season 2 story takes place in this single location. Which means that instead of building a lot of smaller different locations like they did with the Hinokami Chronicles, they can build a bigger single location and populate it full of activities and story missions for you to follow. A bit more like the adventure mode in Storm where you have so much to do around Konoha. Hopefully the activities you do in Demon Slayer aren't as brain dead as those in adventure mode for Storm, but to me, the idea of having a bigger area and taking the time to make it feel more alive, maybe even add a day-night cycle where demons would roam at night for random encounters and during the day you could take on side quests and help the locals. That would just be the ultimate way of immersing ourselves into the Demon Slayer universe, or at least immersing ourselves into the story told by Season 2. One final thing I would like to see in a sequel, and this is 100% a wish, I don't think it's very expected, but switch out training mode for something that would actually be more useful for learning the game. I'm talking combo challenges, defense challenges, that type of thing. Combo challenges in fighting games aren't always the thing you use to learn combos, but they can be a great first step towards learning a character. You learn that certain abilities can be linked together and it helps you be creative in practice mode later. Gives you a head start on a character. I cannot tell you how many people I saw in the first week of the game being out just going for this combo. Just the full attack string into dash cancel into more attacks with every single character. It was such a waste. Furthermore, being able to go into practice mode with a few more settings would definitely be helpful like the ability to record actions for the training dummy and then play back 
enact those actions randomly. That would help you practice against different setups or practice your defense against multiple scenarios. But whatever they do with it, it just has to be better than the current training mode. That just wasn't pleasing anyone. A series of 10 missions, all with the same objectives for different characters, it was just a grind to play through. No one learned anything from this. At all. And those are some of the new things and changes that we can expect, but also what I would like to see in a Demon Slayer sequel. Keep in mind there are still a lot of things that I would like to see changed or updated in this game, but the improvements listed in this video simply would be too big for a single patch, or even a series of patches, that's why they justify a full sequel. All things considered, Hinokami Chronicles is a wonderful first entry, let's hope CyberConnect 2 keeps building up on it and make it the Demon Slayer game of our dreams. But what would you like to see in a Demon Slayer sequel? I would love to read your ideas in the comments down below. And don't forget about the perfect gift for this holiday season, go to raycon.com slash and enter code HOLIDAY for 15% off your order. And as always, thank you very much for watching, my name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Boy.